Fred, you thought all the excitement was down there on the field. You're having fun up here today. It's like I'm in the cockpit of the B-52. This is a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying this. Well, we said at the top of the show it would be a shootout, and we have not been disappointed. No, I'll tell you, we got another quarter plus 2.35 to go, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Rick Danmeyer, who's 10 of 11 as far as field goals are concerned. All of last year, he only kicked 16. So he's headed for his best year in the National Football League. The man deep, Wes Chandler. Chandler up to the 15-yard line. He breaks the tackle. Some running room to the 26-yard line. San Diego will have it there. Making the stop was Dennis Johnson, the former standout from USC. You know, when you're covering a kick like that, especially against a guy like Chandler, you want to be uh, aggressive and get down there, but you want to gather yourself and break down. In other words, uh, break down and get in a good position to come either a left or right for someone like Chandler because he is so dangerous, he can go by in a minute. The Chargers coming into this game averaging over 400 yards in offense. The number one passing team in the AFC. Eric Coriel in motion again. Bounce. Up to Eric Sievers, the rookie tight end. And he brings it out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Sievers, who came in here with 11 catches. He plays a lot of the tight end. That allows Kellen Winslow to split outside. You know... Uh, Eric Sievers is may, basically a blocker, but Don, I'll tell you, he's not afraid to give it to anybody. If, if Billy Shields, number 66, could catch, he, he'd throw him the ball. There's that last drive, taking only a minute 51. The big play, the long pass to Ted Brown. Second down and six for the Chargers. Outs, pumping. Kellen Winslow, he takes a hit at the 50. Tom Hammond, the strong safety. First down to the 49 of Minnesota, and here they come again. Yeah, Tommy Hannon really hit him. He made him pay for it. Danny's, now he does that to, to throw the safety off, and then he comes right back and throw it up the field. The safety drops back and reads the quarterback, and when he sees him going that way, it might draw him out of there, give uh, Winslow a little bit more room to catch the ball. Fred, that's that experience, isn't it? Reading the defense, looking him off, double pumping. And yeah, that you, time, the you first gotta down. Do that. You gotta do that. To the 49 of Minnesota. A minute 37 left in the third quarter. Bouts back pedaling. He's moving around. He's gonna run. This is a first. Oh, did he get hit? That's the reason they don't want him running. Randy Holloway unloaded on him. That's exactly right. I'll tell you, Gary. <laughs> He's got that flak jacket. See the flak jacket on him right there? Danny wants to get rid of the ball. He's not a runner. He's not the Archie Manning. He just wants to step up and get more room. If he takes off, he says, I might as well make something out of this. Well, Randy Holloway comes back and lets him have it. Thank God for those fat flak jackets. Ooh, Holloway, who's been a standing today on the special teams, making the stop on that play. Bounces a big man at 6'3", 204, and he's got the skinny legs. <laughs> on the 40, on a second down and two. First down run by Chuck Munson. Munson to the 31-yard line. Wilkerson and White. That veteran offensive line that has three men at 34 years of age. See, right now, Fouts is feeling the way the game is going now. The game is tied up. He senses that they're on a good drive. He wants to keep it going, so he's going to mix his plays, and he's going to get the ball to his best guy down there. You know, that's what they said about Kramer. He has a feel for the game. Yes, both quarterbacks. Sure they both do. We're very fortunate to have two good quarterbacks like this in one game. And that's the reason both these teams came in here as co-division leaders. Tampa winning today. Denver having a tough time against Detroit. Here is Muncie. And Muncie picks up six yards. Matt Blair, 59 to make. At Transamerica, we've provided affordable life insurance for four generations with Transamerica Occidental Life. We give you great travel values with Transamerica Airlines and budget rent-a-car. We even make sure life's little surprises won't put a hole in your budget. Arnie, my favorite Trans-America insurance agent. First rate service at a fair price. Trans-America. I dig a hundred foot well for a buddy. <laughs> and what do I get? Light beer. <laughs> you ever taste light beer? <laughs> you ever taste Coors Light? You ever taste beer light? It's a surprising taste of Coors Light. 
not bad. It comes from pure Rocky Mountain spring water and high country barley. Good beer. And a way of brewing that squeezes a lot of the calories out but leaves all the taste in. All right, I'm surprised. <laughs> Coors Light, the surprise is how good it tastes. We still have 15 minutes of football to play, and we've had three quarters that's been remarkable. There's Bud chewing his gum. I mean, uh, it, it, you would never know that he's in a tight ball game. He's, that's the way he's always been, and he, he realizes that he doesn't want to show an awful lot of emotion. And then there's Don, who's just <laughs> the antithesis, I should say, just the opposite. Look at him. <laughs> he's yelling at everybody. He's getting together with his Dave Levy, his coordinator there. They're getting organized to get seven points. As we start the fourth quarter, it's second and three. Ball at the 24 of Minnesota. 24 all is our score. And Fouts on a delay to Muncie. Muncie dancing. And he's going to be short. It's going to be third down. Still a yard to go. Chuck Muncie, who did not play last week because of the fractured left hand. I think he's forgotten about the cast and the injured hand. Now, once the game gets going and Chuck realizes he's comfortable, uh, he just forget about that and it'll just become a part of him as the game goes on. There was some talk about Muncie's attitude, but Don Coriel told us yesterday he's been nothing but great since coming here. Yeah, he's, he's really been a spark plug, especially when you need a good ground attack. Chuck's there to give it to him. Third down a yard. Well, do you think they'll throw it or they're going to run it? They're going to go to Muncie. Muncie has it out at 15. He's to the 11-yard line. Eric Sievers, the tight end we mentioned early, threw a very fine block on the play. And the Chargers keep it going. And there's Matt Blair, the last guy up off the pile. Let's flip it off to Chuck. Let Chuck do the work. Look at look at the stride on him. What a beautiful athlete. He just he can and he can deliver punishment as well as receive it because he got hit by three guys right there. 78 yards now for Muncie on 14 carries. John Capoletti has now come into the backfield. They get Muncie a breather. First down, just outside the 10-yard line. This is Capoletti. And Capoletti, who's very tough moving up the middle, he had 85 yards last week against Seattle in that very similar play. Yeah, he's a very steady player for him. I, I really believe that play doesn't show it, but he is a very underrated ball carrier. He's a good blocking back, but he's underrated as a ball carrier. He's going to get those hard yards for you. Second down. Now they can get a first and goal at about the half-yard line. Muncie comes back in. Sievers and Chandler check out. 24 all. 13 10 to go in the fourth quarter. Scales and Joyner split to the top. Scales with a 60 yard touchdown pass in this game. Bounce sending everybody out. Corner, Joyner. Oh! Willie Teal defending on the play, and that was close. That was close. <laughs> Too close for Willie's comfort. Dan, looking right to where he wants to throw the ball. Just waits for a time, puts it up. He aims for the corner of the end zone. Now, uh, Joyner knows that's where he has to run for. That pass is meant to go right to that little orange cone right there, and he goes right for it. Teal made quite a play. I could see a better view of it on the replay. Yes, he did. You know, it must seem, as a defensive secondary, there's 13 men out on a pass pattern. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to be out there on the corner with Will. That's a terrible, lonely play. Third down and six for San Diego. Bouts, the big tight end, Winslow, and he's going to get very close to a first and goal. They needed to get to about the half-yard line. Looks like he's got it. Now, on that play, Winslow stayed in just an extra couple of beats, letting the coverage settle, and then came out underneath it. There he is right there. There he is right there, underneath the coverage. When down here, you get so close to the end zone, you just hope the guy misses the tackle. Now, here's the measurement. They could have a fourth and goal or a fourth and a half yard to go or first and goal, and that's what it is. It's fourth down. Yeah. So that was a very important tackle. Well, here comes Capoletti. You have some sort of an idea what might happen now. And also, two tight ends, Eric Sievers and Pete Holohan, the rookie from Notre Dame, and they're going to go on fourth down. Although all the receivers came out and his running troops went in, I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw the football, although I, he probably won't. Fourth down, inches for a first and goal. And now they're backing up. They're resetting the chains, being sure they're ready. A referee, Chuck Heberling, 12-44. Amazing, as much offense as we've had, it comes down to inches <laughs> on a play like this. You're right. 
It always seems to come down to that. It's a corny saying, but it's very true. We've had 66 passes thrown in this game thus far. Bounce on fourth down. Trying to get it, and I uh, don't know. He no. got the first and goal so. or not. He sure Minnesota. Minnesota says it's their ball. This they is going to have a first and goal, though. It's this gonna is going to be a close. tough spot, Gary, yeah. This is going to be a tough spot. Yep. Dr. Fox says they got it. I believe they do, the way they're marking the ball now. Yeah. I don't see anybody sticking up for Minnesota down there. They may bring the chains in, and they're going to bring them in again. Very important. See how Ed White, 67, got off the football? That's a very, very important thing down here, getting off the football, being low, and helping that guy get yarded. All right, big measurement. It's either Minnesota's ball or it's first and goal. They got it, first and goal. Yeah. That for San Diego is their 15th first down. Minnesota has 22, just to show you the offense we've had in this game. Now they have four downs to get it in at the 12-24 mark. That shows you defensively how improved Minnesota is this year. Last year they were struggling defensively. Yeah. They're sixth against the rush. Last year they were 25th. First and goal. Bouts will try it again. No indication that he's in. Now Muncy's <laughs> saying they're in, but I don't think Chuck has any authority. <laughs> that boy, Chuck. Well, they're trying it again. Bouts has really been belted in this game. He scrambled once and now tried to sneak it twice. <laughs> so it's second and goal at the inch line or two inch, three inch. You know, if I was the quarterback, if I was down, I'd, you know, Muncie and those guys in Capoletta, heck, they get paid for rushing the ball. Give it to them. You know, last week, San Diego made two goal line stands against Seattle. And now they're finding themselves on the other side of the fence. Second and goal. Bounce again, and this time he takes it in. Now, wait a minute. Didn't he get in? We didn't see any signs, did we? No, they didn't. We thought he got in, and now they're indicating. You believe this? He this didn't get in. Unbelievable! I got to see this on replay. Dan doesn't like it. <laughs> There's a grimace on his face. Yeah. Oh. oh, he got hit pretty good there. Well, no, maybe. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you what. I I think that's a touchdown. Let's see what we got here. That's oh, a I touchdown. Think he was in. Yep. That's a touchdown. That's not a good call. That's a touchdown. Third and goal. Boy, that was great camera action. The close-up, the grimace on Fouts' face. This time they give to Muncie. I don't know. No. I don't believe he got oh, in. Oh, Lord. It's fourth and goal. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You know, you know oh, Gary, any, if, if the game would have gone any other way, I'd have been disappointed. <laughs> well, now he decides to give it to Chuck, and he takes off. He's going to do a high hurdle here, but he gets hit by Cannon. Did a great job of coming down the line and getting to him. Yeah, he didn't score. No, sir. You've seen a lot see of goals. right here? But then come down the line right there. That's very important. That's what he's supposed to do. He's not even close to six points. Here they go. Fourth and goal. The fourth attempt from inside the one-yard line. Bouts off to Muncie. He takes it in. Touchdown. Wow. Yeah, spike it, Chuck. Chuck Muncie, his second touchdown rushing of the day, his seventh of the year. You know, the point here is they've tried four or five straight times and got everybody inside tight, and then the last play for the touchdown has pitched it out to Chuck, and that stretches the defense out, which gives him a lot of holes. Let's look at it again. Seaman's coming inside, but just can't quite get to him. You see how the, all the, all the uh, uh, defenders are strung out here? Chuck just takes it in. He's got great speed to go up underneath or outside. Muncie now with 79 yards on 17 carries. Hannon did a good job right here. He did a good job of turning Chuck back in, but just a little bit too late. What a stand by Minnesota. Now, man, Minnesota has a man shaken up. Off Bernerska will come in to attempt the point after. It's Matt Blair that's down on one knee in the end zone. Well, this game is not even uh, close to being decided. They cannot afford to lose Matt Blair. Matt Blair, the big play performer. And now he's up and he's gonna walk off. But isn't it remarkable though, you can play like this, such wide open offense, and then 
have two or three inches, take four plays to pick it up? Yes, it really is. That's why it's a great game, Gary. Gary gets a back end view, but look, Chuck gets the ball. See how everybody's starting to spread out now, the holes that show up between here? He just takes it right up off of John Capaletti right there. John, John takes a little bit of a hit. The hero on that play was uh, Capaletti. He did a good job blocking. John Capaletti with the block, Muncy with the touchdown at the 10:47 mark. It's 30 to 24. But don't go away. The way this game has been seesawing <laughs> back and forth. I think you're kind of enjoying this broadcasting I, I, career. You know something? I'm not sweating. Vernerska, and he had to get it high because the Vikings got up in the air. We're going to be back with more of this game. As the score now, 31-24 in favor of San Diego. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Next Saturday, Tracy Talavera and Jim Hartung compete for individual honors at the U.S. National Gymnastics Championships next Saturday on CBS Sports. This is CBS. Two high-powered offenses here at San Diego Stadium. Fred Dreyer right now. San Diego's got the best of it, 31 to 24. We've got about 10 minutes and 45 seconds left. It's not even close to being over with. We've had 66 passes thrown in this game. Minnesota with Marty McDowell returning. McDowell out to the 20 to the 21-yard line. Just a moment ago, for those of you from that San Francisco-Dallas game, had a great goal line stand by Minnesota. It took four plays inside the one-yard line for them to score on this play. Here's that touchdown again. Watch John Capaletti. He sees color, comes up and hits Turner, knocks him out of the way, and Chuck goes walking in. Good job by John Capaletti. So we welcome the viewers from Dallas, San Francisco, and what a game we've had. That's the last drive of 74 yards to run by Muncie. Tommy Kramer, over 300 yards passing in this game. He has to bring his team back again. He has time to do it. 10, 34 left. Sammy wide in motion. Kramer. To Ahmad Rashad, and Rashad is close to the first down, to the 30-yard line. Woody Lowe and Mike Williams combine on the stop, and this is the way it's been. Back and forth, the offenses continue to roll. You know, Mike Williams was the number one draft pick in 1975. That's when San Diego got a great draft, and they got most of the nucleus that's on the team today. Mike Williams is very seldom uh, uh, talked about because people don't throw his way, let alone run his way, but uh, he's a great athlete out there. Just short of the first down, second and less than a yard. Inside, 10 minutes left. Kramer throws the snap, and that's going to bring up a third down. Louis Kelcher pouncing on it. Minnesota coming in here with the top-ranked offense in the NFC, and they will continue that ranking the way they're playing today. This game was billed as a shootout, and that's exactly what it is. It's Eric Seaver. I think he, what happened is his helmet probably came down over him. He's got a split right between his eyes there. It looks like a helmet shot to me. Couple You've had stitches. that a couple of times. I've had, a, I've had that a couple of times. And you know what? I'm glad he's got it and I'm up here. I think you're glad to be up here. I thought you were <laughs> going to be pacing the field forever at the start of the game, but now you're in it. Third down. Less than a yard. Kramer gives off to Ricky Young, and I don't know. Ricky Young trying to pick up the first down. And it looks like he may be short by a half yard. Yeah. Here's Ricky. Follows his lead blocker, 23, Teddy Brown. Woody Lowe makes a, just a fine play. Or just a, that's a case of uh, too many people being in the same hole. Woody Lowe, who last year was second team all AFC. And now we're going to have a timeout called by Minnesota. You think they're going to think about going for this on fourth down? I'll tell you, the way Tommy Kramer thinks, the way Tommy Kramer thinks, uh, I wouldn't doubt if he talks Bud into going for it. So we'll be back to find out what the Vikings will do on fourth down and inches to go. Look out, the world. Look out. Here comes Ford. Hello, world car. Think I like what you are. I know you're going to travel me. Here come three high-mileage world cars from Ford. Escort two-door hatchback. 
four-door wagon and introducing the totally new four-door hatchback. Here comes a perfect car for four people. Look out for the guy. Here comes Ford. Look out for the guy. Here comes Ford. Here comes front wheel drive. Four wheel independent suspension. Rack and pinion steering. Here comes a whole world of Ford technology. Escort, outselling every import car line in America. Here comes new. Here comes now. Minnesota Vikings called timeout. They've talked it over. They're going to go for it. Fourth I love down. it. I love it, Gary. Look at Bud. He's just chewing his gum. Vikings trailing 31 to 24. 8.54 left in the game. Fourth down. They're going for it. Kramer getting off to Brown. He yeah, got it. Yeah, Hit yeah. Brown. Now, that was an interesting call, Fred, because they didn't hit straight up. They turned a little bit. They went laterally, and that's dangerous. But what happens in a short yardage situation like that, you've got a lot of people merging forward at the snap of the ball. Like, he gives the ball, he gives time enough for him to make the cut for the, the blockers. It sets up the blocking for his offensive people. He just cuts up into the open space. That carry by Brown has put Minnesota over 400 yards in offense. On the other hand, San Diego hasn't done too badly either. They have 381 yards. San Diego is a great defensive team, and, and uh, 400 yards to them is nothing. First down from the 33. Kramer with a new life to Sammy White. White trying to run under it. Wyatt Henderson defending on the play. Kramer trying to locate White. That'll bring up second and 10. Tommy Kramer, since coming in after being hurt in the preseason, has directed this team to three straight wins, trying to make it four, and he has taken the team now over 400 yards in three of those games. Tommy Kramer has won, brought his team back from defeat to win a game seven of the last, uh, I don't know, seven times in the last two years. And so at the 32, it'll be second down. Ted Brown, the only running back. There's the stats on Kramer. He threw those interceptions early in the ball game. Kramer, Terry LeCount, first down. LeCount to the 47-yard line. Kramer just continues to pick apart the defense. Allen Ellis, the former Chicago Bear, defending on the play. Here, Terry just runs down, heads down to throw the defenders off, and then makes a quick break. He goes right to the open area. Both teams have run that play very well. This is a man you don't hear a lot about. Terry LeCount picked up from San Francisco. Louis Kelcher is now coming off the field, walking very slowly. First down at the 46. LeCount, however, in the estimation of Grant, is just an excellent athlete. One running back is Brown. Kramer to LeCount again. And he has the catch to the 37. Two yards short of the first down. Let's check on Kelcher. Kelcher kind of limping around. I think he was hurt. He's bent over on the near sideline. He's out of there now. Jimmy Webb in his place. I think Louie perhaps may have hurt his knee a little bit. Maybe took a blow on it. He's walking and running now, yeah. trying to loosen up. I think what he's done is gone down to tell the coach that, uh, that I'm okay. Look at Louie. Look how big Louie is. Oh, you need a, a wide angle lens for him. What a great tackle. Second down a yard from the 37 yard line. 6.47 left to play. 31-24, San Diego. McDowell in motion. Kramer to Brown. And Brown will get out of bounds at the 35 and a penalty. Wyatt Henderson, unnecessary roughness. And that could be a very, very costly penalty. You better believe it. In a game like this, that could be the determining factor. Don Coryell is not too happy about it. Coryell was right there in the area. Don now walking over. Here it is. Well, there it is right there. I don't think it's tackling by face mask, though, is it? Uh, that there is not a real good thing you want to be doing. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons you got that flag. That's a personal a, foul. Yeah, that's not a good thing to be doing. That hurts him. Roughness, number 32, yeah. defense on the tackle, first down. So Louis Kelcher now has come back in for San Diego. A penalty, moves the ball to the 20-yard line. The Vikings coming right back in this game. A shot, a count, and White split out. Sensor in motion. 
Frazier, Woodcock, a flag. Kramer fumbled the ball. Uh -oh, Did he get uh -oh. it? Minnesota may uh -oh. have it. Let's see. There is a penalty flag. San Diego has it. The Chargers Woo! come up with it. John Woodcock. The penalty inside the 25-yard line. Boy, we'll I want to see this. There's a flag down there. I think we got offsetting penalties. It's against Minnesota, the penalty flag. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Woodcock makes a good move on Riley. That's a great play by Woodcock. And he just gets the ball. Tommy knocks the ball out of Tommy's hand, and he gets it. Boy, he has found a new life here in San Diego after losing left. Detroit last year. Makes a big play. And now the Chargers have it at the 32-yard line. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend. Good eating style. Special of the week for gourmet's delight. Here's how to add a little weekend flavor to any dish. Serve with generous portions of Michelob. Because that smooth and mellow taste helps make any time feel a little like a weekend. Put a little weekend in your week. Yeah. Can't let go, can't get enough. That an amplified human voice can shatter a glass tonight. is remarkable. That a cassette recording of that voice can shatter a glass tonight. is amazing. But after 1,000 plays, can the same cassette still shatter a glass? It can if it's totally new Memorex. Now even after 1,000 plays, reproduction so true, we ask, is it live or is it Memorex? Thursday, a world premiere movie. Every crook's nightmare. Every woman's fantasy. Kevin Dobson is Mike Hammer in Mickey Spillane's Margin for Murder, Thursday. A defensive coordinator, Jack Pardee. Glad that they stopped that last drive. Yeah, there's a big play by uh, by uh, Woodcock, and Jack makes sure he wants to keep everybody in the game because they're off now. They don't want him to relax. He wants to keep everybody on the same page. They may have to go back in the game. First down for San Diego. Capoletti, the only running back. Still a lot of time. 6.28 left. A seven-point lead for the Chargers. Capoletti, and Capoletti struggles forward to the 34-yard line. You know, Gary, right now it's very important for the Vikings defensively, for their leaders, Matt Blair, uh, Studwell, uh, Seaman, Duck White, those people to really rally their players together now and really believe the fact they can stop San Diego. There's only six minutes left in the game. They can still win the game. With that comment, Fred Dreyer, a new member of our CBS broadcast crew, along with Gary Bender, we have less than six minutes left. It's 31-24 in favor of San Diego. They just recovered a fumble to drop a minute stop, rather, a Minnesota Viking offensive thrust. This is Chuck Muncie on second down, and Muncie to the 36. It'll be third down and still along for Doug Martin, the number one draft pick a year ago for Minnesota, led that charge defensively. I really like Doug Martin. I'll tell you why. He could be a great player. He's smart. He likes playing defensive right in. One of the one of the things that they the reasons they went to 3-4 is because he likes to play in. If they went to a 4-3, he'd play a tackle because Holloway was the right end. He's going to be a real good player for him. Now they come to a four-man front on a third down and almost five. Bouts with this pass will be throwing his 35th pass of the afternoon. Open joiner. Out of bounds, Kurt Knopf trying to defend, first down to the 49. It seems as though Joyner always is open on the big play. Yeah, he does a great job. He's very conscientious and very studious. So he just runs down. He gets a little shove there from him, uh, from uh, Knopf and just comes out to the flat and catches the ball. There's a lot of room coming from the inside out to the sideline. There's a lot of room to work in and get the ball to you. So the Chargers keep it going at the 49. Now approaching five minutes left in the game. A game that was tied 14 all at halftime. Outs with 299 yards on the afternoon. Joyner, Turner with a fine play. John Turner, the man they've missed with a broken leg, showing why they really like to have him back there. That's an aggressive play. That's a real good play. That's a big play for them. If they'd have completed that ball, it could have been all over with, but that's a good defensive play. Fouts looking right, he's looking the safety off, and then comes right back over here over the middle to see where Joyner is. 
Good play by John Turner. Turner broke the bone above his right ankle in the first preseason game. Has been coming back slowly, seeing more action than ever today. Both quarterbacks now have thrown 36 passes. This is Muncie. Muncie on a second and 10 to the 48. Scott Studwell, 55 out of Illinois, made the stop. Third down coming up again. The Vikings stop him here. They've got a lot of time the way Tommy Kramer engineers things. Yeah, there's enough time for both teams. If San Diego should drive down here and score, get in the end zone pretty quick. The way Kramer thinks, that they, as long as he's got three seconds on the board, he thinks he can score. This reminder for those of you who, many of you, like 60 minutes, you'll be seeing it in its entirety, except on the West Coast. 4 23 left in this game. From the 48, third down, seven. Munson. He's got a block. And he's going to get the first down. Oh. Well, I hope we get to see that again. That shot Muncie. Here it, here it is again. Now, Muncie gets the ball, and watch him, watch him follow Doug Wilkerson. Now, watch him. He dips inside. He knows where Doug is. He dips inside, dips outside, lets Wilkerson take on the back, and then cuts up underneath him. A great job of blocking and an even better job of watching the blockers by Muncie. That's what you call having good vision. Oh, he's great at that. Wilkerson, in the estimation of Don Coriel, has never played a bad football game. And there was a big block. First down at the 38 of Minnesota. The Vikings going to have to shut him off here at 4-13. Muncie again. Oh, yeah. Makes it inside the 35 to the 33. Seaman on the stop. And Muncie now becoming a real workhorse for the San Diego team. Psychologically now, uh, they've come back and worked up the middle on runs now. Uh, Minnesota has been used to playing the pass, and I think they want to go after the pass, but now they're starting to run the ball, and they could be a little bit weary now that there's only three minutes left in the game. Muncie has 99 yards on 20 carries, so he is close now, one yard short of his 11th 100-yard day of his career. Second down and five. Here he goes again. And he's inside the 30, a flag on the play. Yeah. He has the first down, but let's see what the penalty's all about. Indication, waiting for the preliminary indication from Chuck Heberling. Offensively. You spotted that one. Holding, using the hands, yeah. And that penalty will stop the drive momentarily. They had the first down at the 22-yard line. Muncie coming off now. Capoletti will give him a breather. More importantly here, Gary, is, is you want to make San Diego either <laughs> give up the football right away without using Holding the clock. offense during the run. Number 80, second down. You want to make San Diego commit right away. They're going to use the clock upon him and probably get three points if, if, uh, if anything. But you want to keep him out of the end zone. You want to get the ball back because they're chewing the clock up. Kellen Winslow was the man guilty of holding. Second down, 13 yards to go. This would be a point now for Minnesota could stop it with 326. Bounce. Stepping up. He hits Capoletti. Capoletti is going to be just short of the first down at the 30. Now there's a man they haven't thrown to all day long. You talk about diversification. Yeah, Johnny can do it all. He's a great blocker, a good runner, and I think a, oh, more important right here. You see him come out of the backfield right here? He was watching where the secondary was. He went right to the open spot underneath McNeil here. And now he has to do is work himself up the field like he tries to do. He's just a real smart, competent player. That's his fifth catch of the year. They are more than a yard short. It's about two. Third down. Gunner will be split to the bottom of the screen. 2.43 left in the shootout. 31-24, San Diego. Bouts is going to throw, looking for Joyner. He's not open. He just throws it away. Oh. That'll bring up fourth down. <laughs> and the Vikings want intentional grounding on that one. I tell you, I'm not too sure they're not wrong. They're not right on that. There wasn't any, anybody even close on that pass. You know what's interesting, though? All the coaches from Minnesota are carrying on over there, and Bud Grant just stands over there. <laughs> he lets everybody else worry. He's just worried about listening to the guys up in the box. Now they're going to go for this on fourth down. Hank Bauer will come out. Muncie comes in. Fourth down, a long one, almost two yards. What do you think they'll do, Gary? Run it back. They're going to give it to Muncie. You think? Yeah. 
Here he comes. And got oh! home. Minnesota has recovered. Oh! The Vikings have recovered. He had the first down. But the Vikings come up with a turnover. And they're alive with two minutes and 26 yes, seconds sirree. left. Looks like Scott Studwell is down there, 55, and that's who it is. Studwell, the NFL arm wrestling champ, comes up with it. That was his good arm, too. He took a pretty good little pop on there. You know, all good, you know, all good running backs have to feel as though they can wave the ball around for balance. You can't be expected to have it to be a tank and uh, cuddle it underneath your arms. So right here, he gets hit good by Mulaney right there. That's what brought that ball out of there. And now, Tommy Kramer, his team down by seven. A minute, should say, two minutes and 26 seconds left in the game. He has LeCount in motion. To Brown, 35. Brown has a first down, and he goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line, and here they come. Tommy Kramer who has been remarkable in the two-minute offense, and that's what he's got, 219 left, the ball at the 40. This is where Tommy Kramer is very, very good. They love this situation to be in. He, he'd rather be behind than be ahead. All right, coming up next on CBS, 60 minutes. It will be seen in its entirety immediately following the football game, of course, except on the West Coast. At the 40-yard line, first down. Two minutes, 19 seconds left. Kramer has Brown as the only set running back. Protection is excellent. Throwing, complete. This is Sammy White. White down the sideline and out of bounds. Yes. Inside the 40. I'll tell you, Fred Dreyer, <laughs> these defenses aren't going to want to watch the films on Monday morning. I'll tell you what, you're seeing the two of the best quarterbacks, I think, in the league. Watch Sammy come across the field. He's reading and looking, reading and looking. He adjusts very well. He gets the ball. Now he gets the first down and then gets as many as yards and then comes out of bounds. That first down to the 38-yard line. Sammy White, who hasn't caught any touchdown passes, but he had 25 catches coming into this game. And already picked up three in this one. First down at the 38. The crowd now getting to their feet. Two minutes, eight seconds left. Kramer, look out. Behind Ahmad Rashad. White was also over there, but covered very well by San Diego. San Diego, early in this game, had an interception by Buchanan and also one by Big Hands Johnson. And he returned 36 yards to set up a touchdown. We've got Keith Ferguson in the game now. And uh, what they like with Keith, they think he's going to be a fine pass rusher. Woodcock, Kelcher, and Ferguson. They like those combination of people. Leroy's now coming out of the game. Second down, 10. This will be the last play before the two-minute warning. White, Rashad, and LeCount all split out. Sensor in a wing position. In motion goes Sammy White. And firing off the head of the count was LeCount. A pass to Brown, and Brown will take it to the 32, but Terry LeCount left a count, at least a count, before the snap. A little bit eager. You got, uh, you got uh, Jimmy Webb in the game now. They're running a stunt there. He gets pushed down on the ground. And now you got, now you got a little bit of a, now you got a little bit of a, of a miss, mix up there. And now we want to welcome the audience of the St. Louis Cardinal New York Giant game. We are in San Diego, a minute 58. Motion. Offense number 80, second down. Penalty against Minnesota. They trail by seven, 31 to 24. As this game has been an unbelievable offensive display by both teams. And at the 45 is where they're going to have it. Second down and 15. We'll be back after we take this break. Do you know the price of 10 Toyota standard bed trucks? Featuring 2.4 liter overhead cam engines, fantastic fuel economy, front disc brakes, a comfortable interior, and look how much they can hold in the back. Do you know the price of 10 Toyota standard bed trucks? One. Ferrari. Oh, what a feeling. Feels like a car, works like a truck. Toyota. 
We want to make you smile. Well, welcome back. I see you brought a friend. My boss hasn't smiled the whole trip. Mm, I'm back. I think you'll like our beds. Mm, big room. Everything all right? That's fine. Call me for dinner in an hour. We made him smile. Come to Holiday Inn where your smile says you're number one there's the time remaining 158 the minnesota vikings trail by seven this has been a game seesaw back and forth bud grant's team looking for their four straight win tommy kramer has thrown for 380 yards two touchdowns his counterpart dan fouts 310 yards and three touchdowns second down and 15. kramer with protection there Going up top to Terry LeCount. He's got it. Oh! Terry LeCount. Oh! Alan Ellis, who they Woo! picked up this week on waivers from Chicago, was burned on the play. And LeCount, the biggest problem was just getting turned around to locate the football. Oh, you know, I, I tell you, there is a play that'll wake you up. That boy, that does that tie the ball game up. 43 yards on the play. Here it is, Kramer looking to count's way the whole time. Just a sudden, heaves it and let Terry run under the thing. Alice, Alan Ellis defending, he just came to the team. And I'll, I'll tell you what, what a great play. That's tough to backpedal like that and catch the ball. Stay on your feet. A very important point after for Dan Meyer. Keith Nord to hold at the 151 mark of this game. The snap, he had a tough time getting it down and he missed it. Oh! Keith Nord had a tough time getting the ball set, and Dan Meyer missed it. That's his second miss of the year. He had a low snap, Gary. He had a low snap on that thing, and that's very, very, you gotta be, it's almost an artistic touch you have to have for that type of thing. And so the Vikings trail by one. Hi, Hal. Hi, Mr. Van Patten. You know, I've got a big family in real life, too, so we need room when we drive. Well, our new Olds Delta 88 is one family car that didn't forget the family. And this one's a diesel, so it has the same kind of mileage as many smaller cars. Now, that's practical. Our new Olds Delta 88. In today's practical world, there's still room to do it with style. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend. Downbeat style. Whether it's jazz, classical, country, or rock, music and Michelob is always the perfect arrangement. Because that smooth and mellow taste helps make any time feel a little like a weekend. Put a little weekend in your week. The Minnesota Vikings went from jubilation to dismay on one snap of the football. You didn't expect anything any different, did you, Gary? Oh, <laughs> it's really been exciting. Remarkable okay. pass to LeCount. Dan Myers kick wide of the mark. The Vikings are down by one, 151. Now do they try the onside kick? San Diego's expecting it. They have a lot of people jumped up now to the 45-yard line. Here they come. Here Looks they like come. the onside kick is going to be tried, and here it is. Oh, yeah! The Vikings are after it. They go! Oh! Terry <laughs> LeCount, the man who caught the touchdown. Can you believe it? Terry LeCount got the ball. The guy who caught the touchdown came up with the ball. What a play. What a kick by Dan Meyer. He got it to bounce the right way. That, you're right, Gary. That is an excellent watch. This. That, that's, that's an artistic thing right there. He, it's purposely made to bounce up high like that. This guy comes down, Randy Holloway comes down and pushes it further back to field. LeCount gets it and goes out of bounds. It's Vikings ball. Now, wait a minute. We're having a discussion going on. The official standing. Did the ball go 10 yards? Fred, that's one thing they have to do. And it I looks like it I did. I think it did. I really believe it did. Here we go. There it is. There's Dan Meyer's kick. It hits. Takes a bounce, goes over Winslow's head. It's hit by Holloway. 
and picked up by LeCount. I think when they said Holloway hit it, it didn't quite go 10 yards, but it did. That was a heck of a play by Holloway. He's like a basketball player oh. rejecting a shot. And you know something, Gary? Those people work on that a great deal, more so than any other team. They are great special teams people, and they believe that you can win and lose games by your special team. So hang on. Here's the situation. A one-point lead for San Diego with 149 left. You might recall earlier this year, San Diego intercepted a pass on the goal line against Detroit to win, and now they have their defense backed up again. We welcome the viewers of the Detroit-Denver game. A minute 49 left in this one. The Vikings down by one. They have the football. Terry LeCount, who just caught a 43-yard touchdown pass, makes that catch. What has happened? The Vikings scored and then missed the point after. Then they had the onside kick. They covered the ball. That's where they have it now with a second down and seven. And we have a man hurt for Minnesota, Ahmad Rashad, on the far side. Minnesota has two timeouts left in this game. The ball at the 38-yard line. Fred Dreyer in his first job, his first assignment for CBS, <laughs> may have had and may have one of the most exciting games you're ever going to see. I love it. This is a great indoctrination for me, Gary. Rashad is all right. The crowd upset. They thought they were stalling there with a minute 34 left to go. But the point after is the difference in this game. To have as much offense as we've had, Kramer with 423 yards and four touchdowns and still have a point after be the difference. Yeah, sure could. Uh, you know, I, I tell you, uh, people thought he might have been uh, faking there. There's a good chance he could have been faking. It's a darn good chance he could have been faking. They only have two timeouts, and they might need those two timeouts with the next uh, minute and a half left on the clock. Kramer has hit 25 of 40 passes. Well, 40, 26 of 41. There's the update. Four touchdowns, the two interceptions back in the first quarter. He's had to play catch-up football, and nobody is any better at it than Tommy Kramer. We welcome the San Francisco Dallas viewers as this game has a minute 34 left. The Vikings trail by one. Second down. Seven yards to go. Ted Brown, the only running back behind Kramer, who's thrown for 423 yards. The Vikings scored a moment ago, missed the point after. That's intended for Brown. That'll bring up third down. There is a flag, however, at the 40-yard line. San Diego indicating it's against Minnesota. The Vikings scoring on the last drive on a 43-yard touchdown catch. Then a snap from center was not put down. As an end result, the kick went wide, and that's the difference of the game. And 60 minutes will follow immediately after the conclusion of this one. You think it's as interesting as this game is going <laughs> to be? <laughs> one thirty left. Now, here's, a, here's an interesting decision. Do they take the penalty, or do they refuse Wait, it? wait. Illegal motion. Offense. Number 23. Decline. That's what Third I thought. Down. Oh, yeah. yeah. They'll take the play and that means it's third down and seven. Third and seven. But in all intents and purposes they'll have two downs to get it as you know they'll be going for it on court. The crowd a capacity crowd for the 24th consecutive Sunday on their feet. Kramer the time LeCount again. Oh. He's got it. First down at the 20, and LeCount is the player of the second half. Allen Ellis defending on him. First down at the 20-yard line. A minute 16 left. LeCount has been superb here down the stretch. He's out along with White and Rashad split out. First down at the 20-yard line. Tommy Kramer follows the snap. Oh, no. Who's got it? I think Minnesota has recovered, and they have. Boy. Now the time with 52 seconds. LeCount has six catches for 121 yards. All of them coming down the stretch. They have not used their timeouts yet. There's only 40 seconds left on the clock. A field goal of no value. They've got to score. Down by seven. Kramer taking his time with 34 seconds. Gives to Brown. Brown is dropped. I don't understand. Yeah, they're setting it up for a field goal. 
All right, with 31-30, they need that field goal with a one-point difference at the 19-yard line. Brown moving it inside. They're going to let it wind down now, Freddie, with 15. There it is, 12, 11, 10. They'll stop it, and then it's all up to Rick Danmeyer. Last week, the Vikings won a game, but a field goal was missed with one second. Yeah, they just decided that if we're not going to win it, neither we're not going to give San Diego any more time on the clock. Inside the 20-yard line is where it is. Isn't it something that you miss a point after that's a difference? But now he has a chance yeah. to redeem himself. Yeah. Well, if an offense that moves the ball up and down the field like that, uh, a field goal kicker's going to get his opportunities throughout the game. Inside the 20, so step off 17 yards from there. They're going to be kicking the ball at about the 40, be about 40 yards away. Now, Dan Meyer this year, he kicked a 43-yarder last week. His longest of the year is 45. He is 10 of 11 this year. There is Bud Grant. You believe it? Comes down the last seconds of the last two games. Well, he's got his head set off. He's a little bit more, uh, he's working a little bit harder on that gum. Boy, the pressure. There's Don gone. Coriel. Yeah. He's, uh, this is it. Yeah, sure is. going to be a 38-yard attempt. I wouldn't be surprised to see a timeout by San Diego to, to put a little bit more pressure on Dan Meyer. Perhaps not. Nor the hole. Kick by Dan Meyer is up, and yeah, it is good. Got it. And the Minnesota Vikings have won it. The Vikings have won it. A remarkable victory by the Vikings, who have won their fourth in a row. They remain tied with Tampa Bay in first place of the NFC Central Division. And you have to give them re unbelievable credit after missing that point after and coming right back. Yeah, the pressure was right on Dan Meyer, no doubt about it. I tell you, the Vikings, this could really make the Vikings season. They could just take off from here now. It's a stunning defeat by San for San Diego. But I tell you, what a game. I'm, uh, I tell you, that was a great game. And now Minnesota's got to return home against Philadelphia. Let's just look back at a great moment for Rick Dan Meyer. He was in this situation earlier, and he missed it. Look at him. He is so excited. Look at him. <laughs> he is so happy right now. He has hit 11 of 12 field goals this year. What a year this man is having for Minnesota. Alcoa presents fantastic finishes. 1967, 15 degrees below zero in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Packers trail the Cowboys by three. The field is a sheet of ice as Bart Starr keeps the ball and sneaks into the end zone for the score. Who made the block that sprung him? Right guard Jerry Kramer against massive Jethro Pugh. The Packers win 21 to 17 and claim the NFL championship. Can't wait. Since time began, nature has demonstrated the wisdom of recycling. In rain that falls to the earth, travels to the sea, and rises to the clouds again. Now, man must learn to recycle too. At Alcoa, we've already started by initiating programs that are saving billions of aluminum cans every year. Raw materials and energy too. Recycling, we're simply doing what nature has always done. We can't wait for tomorrow. Alcoa can't wait. 33 to 31 the Vikings after losing their first two have now won four in a row after they recovered that onside kick it took them six plays to come to this watch the snap by 51 a good snap a good set what she didn't have before it was uh, when he missed the extra point it was a bad snap but he got a good snap here and he's very accurate he's, he's been a very improving player for them and Bud Grant likes that consistency look at him boy is he happy yes sir that's, well, a, that's a great job. What a game it sets up for next week in Metropolitan Stadium. Philadelphia unbeaten 6-0 against the Vikings 4-2 right here on CBS. So that gives you an idea what we'll come to in the seventh week of the NFL. <laughs> Fred, super job. I Thank really enjoyed it much. with you today. Yeah, so did I. So for Fred Dreyer, I'm Gary Bender saying so long where the Vikings have defeated San Diego 33-31.
And what a way from GOAT to HERO. Let's get you up to date with everything that went on in the National Football League today as most of us get ready for 60 minutes. San Francisco over Dallas, 45 to 14. That was just one of many stunners. The Giants, easy over the St. Louis Cardinals, 34-14. The Giants are now three and three. Denver downing Detroit, 27-21, despite 185 yards by Billy Sims and two touchdowns in that game. And the game you just watched, Minnesota in a cliffhanger over San Diego, 33 to 31, the final. Washington wins for the first time today over Chicago. The Bears are now 1-5, 24-7 was the final there. Houston over Seattle, 35-17. Earl Campbell, his greatest day ever, 39 carries, 186 yards in that game. Kansas City shuts out Oakland, 27-0. The Raiders have been shut out three straight games. Next, Tampa Bay for the Raiders. And speaking of Tampa Bay, they win today over Green Bay, 21-10. So the Bucks remain tied with the Vikes in the NFC Central. Cincinnati downs Baltimore, 41-19 is the final in that game. The game of the day. Los Angeles on a last-second field goal. Downs Atlanta, 37-35. But the main man right here, Leroy Irvin. 84 yards on this punt return. He also hauled one back. 75 yards as the Rams stun the Falcons. And now the Rams and the Niners are tied. Pittsburgh over Cleveland, 13-7 was the final in that game. The Jets down New England, 28-24. And it was Philadelphia over New Orleans, 31-14. So the Eagles remain unbeaten and untied. And it was this play that did it for Dick Vermeil. On the turnover by the Saints, here came Mike LeMaster. And the Saints were never in it. And that wraps up a marvelous day of football. And remember, most of us, 60 minutes is next, except for those of you watching on the West Coast. On behalf of all of us of CBS Sports, I'm Brent Musburger. Have a nice week. We'll see you next Saturday. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. If you have something nasty to say, don't say it on paper. We know someone who did, and it may cost his boss $9 million. Tonight on CBS. This is CBS.